Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Legion Season 1 Episode 8 is the season finale, it's called Chapter 8, full spoilers for the episode as always. First things first, the opening like 5-10 minutes of this were glorious. Uh, yeah, the, the, the recap of, of what had happened to, to the man. Uh, yeah, who mean Clark? Yeah, well I mean at that point we, I don't think we know his name. I would, I would say it's not really a recap, because we didn't really know any of this information before. It was more his side of the story since the uh, since the events of episode one. Uh, and what I actually really liked about him coming back into it, all in the fact that I just liked him, was it really bookends the season, especially since so much of this episode is him across the table being interrogated. Yeah, it, it's this episode kind of feels like an epilogue to the season more than a... Like, like, like last episode felt like th- that was the big climax and this one is like right let's kind of deal with some ideas and you know wrap up things and then kind of shuffle in towards season two i mean th- there is the 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 end of the 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 story of this season with the shadow king but it, it doesn't feel as climactic as it did in the previous episode yes yeah, see that's where i kind of disagree because i feel like I feel like the confrontation when the Shadow King actually gets out of David, especially since Shadow King getting out of David is kind of the end of the story for this it season. It is. That, that, that's what I mean, yeah. So, I, I, to me, this, this felt just as climatic, if not more so, in the last episode, because not only does he get out, we have that visual representation of what we saw on the chalkboard, the blackboard, last episode, mm. when the Shadow King's in Kerry and it's running towards David, and they actually have the same colours that were on the blackboard last episode. So yeah, it's cool. It just that, that was all very great. That, that entire sequence, actually, when when they're trying to fix David and they're trying to like force the Shadow King out, but the Shadow King, because Sid and David swap bodies, can contact her, and yeah. basically threatens her and is like, "Yeah, I mean, you can't get me out if he doesn't die too." So, she she runs into the room and kisses him, and the Shadow King is into her. Yeah, and it's such a cool visual when her eyes just turn yellow. It's yeah, like you know exactly what's going on. She looks shit evil. She really does. And from there, everything just from that point on until the fight is over, everything's in slow motion. And she she takes off her glove. She touches Carrie, and then I thought it was going to keep passing from people to people, but she she stays in Carrie, and Carrie like kicks Carrie. And then takes it. By the way, Potomi comes in and still tries to fire a machine gun at her. I'm like, it's still her body, Potomi. Yeah, Calm yeah. Down. I was thinking that. It's like, dude. I mean, this is your friend. He's a bit, bit hot headed. Is all I'm saying. A bit hot headed. Yeah. Uh, but it, but it was like that in the early on episode as well because we're not t- talking about Clark. He's like, oh, let's kill him. Let's just kill him. Let's kill him as quickly as it's possible. It's true. He, he is very trigger happy, isn't he? Yeah, but everyone else is like, no, 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 no. Let's let's try and change. Obviously, David's like, let's try and work together. Uh, even Sid sees that sees that Clark might be sympathetic towards David and tries mm. to convince him of such. And it seems that by the end of the episode he is. Uh, but what to go back to the, the opening though, mm. uh, that opening like five ten minutes sort of uh, all all in the wider aspect ratio of David opening his eyes and we see that he's 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 married. He's got a husband and they've got an adopted child who's clearly adopted because they're gay men and they can't have a natural kid. No. That was more a bit of a joke because you thought I was going to say because he was black. I, was, yeah. I mean, sure. So we see all all this. We see him waking up and we see him see see his reflection for the first time, and he's all two faced because of the because of the scar and the burns. Uh, but what I thought was really impressive about all this this little section, this him waking up, him being at home, him going back to work, and them trying to force a desk job on him because he's he's incapacitated. He can't go yeah. out and do his job properly anymore. In five minutes, it made me sympathise with him. It did. It made him sympathetic, and you you understood that he was kind of doing his job for, a, as far as he was concerned, a good reason. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like it was. It wasn't anything vicious that he was doing. He, he's he's just a normal guy. Yeah, he's he's doing his job, and he thinks he's doing the right thing. He thinks he's part of the government. He thinks he's there's this threat. He's the one stopping it. He he believes in what he's doing, and that's why by the end of the episode, when he actually sees how how much of a threat the Shadow King is, he sees the well, he gets kicked across the, the right down the hallway for a start mm. uh, when it's in Kerry. But by the way, Kerry also looked really cool when she was possessed by Shadow she King. She did. Yeah. Every, everyone who was possessed by Shadow King was looking good. Uh, they they all had this menacing badass like Aubrey Plaza's just 
plowing through people kind of vibe to it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, the Shadow King himself still looks creepy. When it, when when Sid was in her like her head with her, and she turned into the big more mm. demon esque version of herself and so on. But now, so that's why at the, at the end when David's like, so you see that we kind of have to work together now, and he goes, uh, "Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it." You kind yeah. of buy it. You see why why he has been flipped. It kind of feels like season two will be our group and D3 against the Shadow King. Like They'll have to form this uneasy alliance. Yeah, who of course leaves the leaves the episode in Oliver's body, which comes at a really sad moment because all, Oliver just, it seems like he just kind of remembers, oh yeah, Melanie's my wife. And you, you, it sets that up really well because you see her being kind of sad that he doesn't remember and she tries to initiate a little date and well, she's still hopeful, of course, but there's a bit of sadness to her. She's out in the rain kind of... Like, oh, yeah. He doesn't remember me. Why doesn't he remember me? I'm his wife. God damn it! Uh, and he, he has that moment where, he, where he's like Melanie, like like he remembers, and it's, it's like right a spark a- of recognition. Yeah. yeah, and it's right after that the uh, the Shadow King takes him over. So she's out in the world with him, and he he uh, is also some kind of telepath from what it seems like. So it still has. Well, power. I thought we we kind of knew that the whole time. Was oh, that no, not his? No, I wasn't saying that was confirmed. I was I was just reiterating that right. Okay. He's a telepath, so she'll still right. have similar powers with his body. Yeah, maybe not as powerful. Yeah, not as strong, yeah. Still relatively strong from what we've seen of him. Obviously, he was still in the astral plane, and I mean, he got stuck there, but... What I thought was interesting, and this was actually, again, really cool, that slow-motion sequence. I keep going back to this slow-motion sequence. Mm. Those were the two standouts. The slow-motion sequence, the fight, and the opening, like, five-minute, almost short Definitely. film about uh, about the, the interrogator, about Clark. But uh, we, we see that the Shao King still has his powers when he's in other bodies, Mm. Because he still uses like telekinesis to do stuff while he's in like uh, when he's in Kerry's body, but it was actually a really cool moment. See when he like just sort of like holds up his hand like a gun, and then like goes click bang, and then yeah. like, Melanie goes down. It's like oh man, that was that was pretty cool. That was fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was a very invigorating episode. Very very energetic. For, again, full of the style that the, sh- the show's had all season, but uh, everything just had that extra weight because everything was finally going down. Uh, Kerry and Carrie, of course, were st- she was still pissed at him. We get the sense that after if they've been separated for a while, that they feel kind of weak or they feel like they have to reconnect. But she's stubborn enough in this episode because she's pissed at him that she doesn't want to. It does very much feel like a lover's spat where she doesn't yeah. want to be in the same bed, kind of thing. That's the kind yeah. of what it feels like. Yeah, he talks about re- uh, maybe she come in for a recharge. Yeah, and she's like, no, no, I'm good. Yeah, and he he's clearly like kind of getting the shakes, is like you know, uh, uh, almost like it's like a couple fight, except if the if the other person was like your heroine <laughs> that you, you had to take every once in a while. <laughs> Pretty much. And he's like, oh, I need a recharge, and we'll get the shakes here. Uh, and she's pissed, but obviously she's worried that about him at the end because she she does kick him into oblivion when she's got the shell mm-hmm. inside him inside her. So no, nah, uh, very fun. Uh, of course, uh, David. At least for the first half of the episode. Obviously, at the end, the Shadow King is gone. He probably will have more yeah. control now as well. But for a little while, while the, the headband's still working. Uh, so we, we ended the cliffhanger last week with... All right, so Clark's here with his army. He's got this big army of soldiers. It's like, yeah, kill them all first. We just need David. And David's like, no. Just puts them into this big, <laughs> massive tower of people. Do, do you know what my favourite part? Obviously that was impressive, right? But my favourite part of it was the reactions of everyone around him, like all his teammates, because some of them looked kind of scared. Sid looked turned on, quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, and then I didn't notice her at first, but, but I just noticed before the scene cut that Kerry had this kind of smirk in her face, like, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that was badass. Like, it wasn't the same as Sid. Sid. Sid was more attraction. Like, she was like, oh, this is impressive. This is getting my juices going. Whereas Kerry was like, I respect this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then obviously you cut the clock and he just goes, "Shit." <laughs> yeah, he was actually pretty funny this episode. He was. Uh, uh, whenever they had him in the interrogation sort of settings and he was like debating with Melanie or was debating with the rest of the team, uh, th- that was that was good stuff. He he, he was having uh, just a dry wit that was. Uh, yeah. So uh, for for me, this this was kind of a a perfect finale for this show actually because it. It brought us back out into the real world, so it wasn't as confusing as some of the head. Even though I was enjoying that, I think the finale had to be a bit clearer. It did because you want people to know what happened by the end of the story. You, I yeah. mean, you, you want things to maybe be a little unclear at points. You know, you want them to analyze and think about things, but you want them to have understood the story still. Yeah, and I feel like this 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 episode does that. It gives it a big 
the, the big climatic sort of epic stakes fight when they're running towards each other in slow motion with the blue and, blue and red sort of energy mm. sort of force fields erupting around them uh, although my only criticism of that is that David almost looked like he was the Flash at one point with the electricity in the thing it, it was just giving me some Flash vibes but other yeah than that, I can see what you mean <laughs> other than that though it was, it was great because as soon as it clicked that it was the same thing that was on the blackboard last episode I was like oh man this is yeah. this is good stuff uh, so no uh, every, everything got advanced it, it felt like we did get wrap up although we've not eliminated the threat the Shadow King you know they've changed the game because now the Shadow King's still a threat but she's out there she's out there doing yeah, something yeah before it was an internal threat a personal threat to David but they they separate it that, that battle was won but now the threat is it's an external threat it's what will they do out in the world in full control of someone? Which is why it makes sense that D3 may end up working with the mutants because yeah. now they see it's this external threat that is actually much worse. Like, we're worried about them, you know, becoming evil and deciding that they're gods and stepping on us, but there's this thing that's already decided that and they're trying yeah. to fight it, so maybe they will. Because that's one of the things, we throughout the episode, we see that uh, Clark's husband and the rest of D3 are watching through his, probably his, his dodgy eye. They've probably put a camera in that, I imagine. Yeah. Because uh, we see that's all all messed up, and they're they're seeing all this stuff go down throughout the episode, mm. and uh, so we know they're witnessing this as well. Whether or not they agree with Clark when we find out next season is another question. But that's, yeah, that's m- where maybe we're at. maybe we're wrong, but it, it really does feel like they're setting up for an uh, alliance between them because there is a a greater threat, so to speak, an uneasy alliance, perhaps. So yeah, that was that was the finale. It was pretty. It was actually a lot more clear cut than most of the other episodes because it was so so focused. Yeah, and do you know, do you know the sequence the I really enjoyed actually, other than the the main two that we've spoken yeah. about, is uh the one inside the kind of the only one inside David's head really, where it has all the images of his oh, life. Oh yeah. So it's when they first turn on the thing, they're trying to like get rid of the Shadow King. Yeah. And then when it all sort of starts to go wrong, they don't know if it's working. We go inside his head, and he actually. He takes control of it. He takes control yeah, of the Shadow yeah. King. Uh, Lenny's standing there, unable to move. Yeah, and he has this this conversation. It's like, well, what will what will he be without the Shadow King? He's never known a, a life without it, and and who will he end up being? And I thought it was a really great sequence. All the images in the background that was really effective. Yeah, and there was like three Pink Floyd songs playing, which obviously this show has as a debt to Pink Floyd in terms of its psychedelic nature and I mean the name of Sid, but. Cool. Uh, what I like about that as well is just just from a character perspective that in the finale he manages to as much as the the king's still a threat it's still out there it's still going to be a problem we still have to fight it but the idea that again if the if the story of this season was David versus the Shadow King inside his head the idea that in the finale he is able to actually just say no stop I have your yeah, control he he wins this fight yeah he he's won this. And that actually motivates the Shadow King because maybe the Shadow King is even more pissed off and wants revenge. It's not just about getting what it wants anymore. It's about crushing him because he managed to take control because he yeah. he managed to sort of uh, emasculate. Emasculate may not be the right word when you're talking about a, a, an evil mutant demon thing, but <laughs> you know what it's, I mean. It, it's gone from just wanting to possess the body for the sake of power to becoming an actual personal grudge with David himself because this this man humiliated him. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm getting from it. So even though it has been defeated in this battle, I don't think that necessarily nullifies its threat. Like it doesn't feel oh, like it's a weak villain anymore. It doesn't feel like oh no, it's now it's going to be easy to fight now because David's done it once. Because now the Shadow King can presumably control other people, maybe build an army, or he, he can do wackier things that I can't even comprehend yet because who knows what season 2 is going to bring but yeah. that's kind of uh, which is much the one problem I had with the final sort of scene which is uh, Oliver in the car and it like pans over and we see Lenny sort of because really, she's not there at first but then when it goes past the window you see her arm sort of sticking out it's nice yeah. Yeah. it's a really nice little reveal that she's there and she's present in his mind and she's mm. the one in control uh, but because they wanted to do all these effects, the the actual driving scene was like a rear screen projection. It's not, they're not really on the road, and it's really obvious. Uh, mm. And that was a little bit distracting at first. I got why once it got to the, the reveal of her and the, then the way they did all that. I got why they did that because they wanted to do all these fancy. They parts did of it. tear the moment for a second. It did for a second. I was like, oh, well, this looks like a sitcom car sequence. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. 
But but all on that, no, all on that, yeah, I liked I liked how it ended. Yeah. And yeah, so going into season two, we have personal grudge from the Shadow King to David ups the stakes. We also have the personal stakes for Melanie because Oliver's the one that's being controlled. Yeah. So it doesn't even nullify that side of it. It's it still, if anything, it's more personal for her now than it was before. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, she, which by the way, one of my favorite responses actually is uh, when she's when they've got uh, Clark and he he says, "Oh, you're Melanie Bird and your husband so and so, and he's pres- been presumed dead for twenty years." And I like how she just goes, hey, "He'll turn up." Yeah, yeah. That was just it's a really nonchalant. Response. It's like yeah. he's two rooms over. Don't worry about him. Uh, yeah. He'll turn up. Yeah, that was a good response. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, really like this season. Uh, I think it is definitely a unique season of TV. Not just because mm. of all the stylistic. Obviously, there's the changing of aspect ratios, the silent sequence, the the James Bond opening music s sequence. All, all these different things. It's done a lot of wacky things, and they've all worked in the context of what the show was doing. I think that's the thing that's most impressive for me about that stylized things. None of it felt like just for the sake of it. They've always mm. worked to further the story. Yeah, 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 and they've always made sense from. Like in this case of the James Bond one, it was because Lenny was basking that she could do whatever she wanted. Like it always worked yeah. for, for whoever the whoever, whatever character was at the core of the scene or the point of the scene, it worked for them and where they were. So it always it never felt out of place in that sense or exactly. forced for the, for the sake of having some wacky style. Mm. Uh, uh, but I, I think I think what impresses me though is more the the way it's played with structure. We spoke about this a little bit last time where. Because the fight's in his head, it's not necessarily always out in the real world, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not real, that the stakes aren't real, because they're actually in his head and kind of thing, and how it's played with... You know, about half the show has taken place in his head, to an extent. The first episode... Well, not the first episode so much, but a lot of the stuff in the the two, three, four episodes where they're trying to look into his memories... Yeah, they're they're in and out there. Yeah, and then six and seven, it was almost entirely in his head where they're trying to fight their way back out because the Shadow King has got them all trapped... Like so much of it was in his head, but it didn't necessarily mean that the, the the fight wasn't real. And it played with those ideas, like what is real, what isn't, what matters, what doesn't, yeah. and it felt like it explored that rather than just you know because you could like it's funny that thing in the blackboard with the, the two people looking at each other and just the, the energy beams. You could have just done that, and a movie might have done that where it's just the two characters looking at each other and like just yeah. But this was so much more. And just stare at each other like that for. For ages, like they could have just done that and had some sound effects, and it could have worked, but it would have been nowhere near as entertaining. That this, this made it intricate. This gave it depth. This gave it, gave it a, a story, a story within that fight. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, impressive. I, I really like Legion season one. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have expected not to, given who was involved, but because it was just like, oh, it's an X Men show. Yeah, it was. We just weren't that excited about it, I don't think. So we were X- like, oh, this this should be good, but expectations weren't massively yeah. high. It's, you know, it's an X-Men show and the movies are really hit and miss, so that doesn't inspire confidence. It's an X-Men character who I don't think either of us have really ever cared um, about or read no, about. I think I've read a handful of three issues in, in, in total. Yeah. But no, this is a great show. Uh, I'm looking, for, looking forward to season two. I'm really glad it got renewed. And uh, uh, I know uh, they said just after, after around the end of the episode that season two will be... 10 episodes is what he's planning for oh good more and more but he's, he's, he said should be as, as long as everything goes on track february again next year yeah cool yeah. cool uh because so many shows have not made the same time of year that <laughs> yeah the previous had had this year. specify it with this one it's like no we're, we're aiming for that don't worry no nah. fargo later stranger things later mr robot later game of thrones later I don't care about that Maybe. one as much. You but don't yeah. care about it, but it's still a big <laughs> example. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. That's Legion uh, Season 1 done. Uh, well, I, I guess all that leaves is the, the post credit scene. Yeah. What, what, so there was a ball, and it it sucked David up. <laughs> yeah, it kind of scans him and absorbs him into it. Uh, I don't know what to make of that. Uh, I, I don't know who who it was and why. Hmm. Do you know what the visual of it really reminds me? You know, him banging on the glass to get, you know, Phantom, when, when Zone. It was like Phantom Zone. It's just yeah. all I could think of. I was like, Phantom man, Zone. it's just that. I know, I know the, the tease. They, were, they said they were teasing, not in the show, but like in interviews and stuff this week. Uh, I, th- I think uh, Noah Holly was uh, teasing that there might be Professor X stuff in season two. Right. I, don't, I don't know why he'd be the one who'd send the ball that would suck his son up, but. 
<laughs> whatever. Because it doesn't seem to have harmed him. It seems more no, literally no. like it's, yeah. tra- it's it's transporting him somewhere. But... Honestly, if I was to guess, either if it's not like Professor X or like other, I, I do think it's something new and not something we've we've known in the show. I don't, this doesn't seem like D three to me. This seems like a new a new entity that has this technology. Whether that's another group of mutants that maybe have worked with Professor X. Hmm. That's the thing, it doesn't feel like D3, because it feels like, well, if it was them, why wouldn't they have just done this in the first place? I, yeah, my guess would be another set of mutants that have caught wind of all this is going on, and this is just them picking them up so they can bring them to them and have a chat with them. Mm. That, that, that would be my, my guess at this point, but I really don't know. It's kind of just saying, hey, look, this is where season two is picking up, but yeah. it doesn't really give us much to go on. Yeah. <laughs> Seth has a really weird delayed reaction as well. She's like, wait, what? I like, oh, I better go <laughs> I, I, in. There's the shock of, hang on, he's gone. What, be- what just happened? I better go in and tell them. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, Legion Season 1. Let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps out a lot. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fudge for channel updates. Our individual Twitters are on the screen for everyday ramblings. Thanks for watching, guys. Have you got any vanilla?